ladies and gentlemen, let's talk about essences and provide some feedback here. Now, this uh, video is going to be a little hard. It's going to be a little nerdy. So I need you to cut me a little bit of slack with this one. There's a lot to cover here, but it's important because this has ramifications in so many different ways, this new essence system. Uh, so... Get, cut me some leeway with this one as we get through this. Uh, let's look at the essences themselves. Now, Blizzard have been really cool about giving us all the essences to try. This is it. So if you click onto your Heart of Azeroth, just like you would with Azeroth Armor, you're going to get this new screen, okay? And this is what comes from the Heart Forge. And they have given us every essence in their epic version. So this is like the heroic version. And you can also see here where you get them from. So some of the notorious ones that we mentioned in the preview video, like Blood of the Enemy, we can now see this comes from Battlegrounds. Okay, so in order to get this, you're going to have to do some PvP. Sorry, uh, but they have decided where they come from. Uh, we can see some other ones here. You can see the next rank. So remember, the maximum power you can gain from the essences once they're at full strength there are three ranks you get a green one then you get a blue one then you get the epic one uh comes and stops at heroic there is another rank after that that's the legendary version and that is all aesthetic so it won't gain any power but it's a bit flashier when you use it people will know you have it it's kind of like a special snowflake kind of thing so as you can see here, the next rank is to reach Gladiator in the week, then claim your next weekly PvP war chest for Season 3 or later. If I want the legendary version of Blood of the Enemy, I have uh, Battleground and Brawl wins in Season 3 or 4, and then you can see it says under there in the grey text, Blood of the Enemy gains an enhanced appearance. So it's all cosmetic. So the maximum version you can get, the heroic version, shouldn't be too difficult to get, and you can target where to get them from. So we have all of them here. Now, remember, these are role-based. So every single... These are the DPS ones. I'm in balance spec right now. So every single DPS in the game, ranged, melee, doesn't matter whatsoever, they all have access to Azeroth's Undying Gift. Okay? And for the most part, they all do the same thing. So if you are a rogue, you will have Azeroth's Undying Gift, and it will still reduce all the damage you take by 40% for two seconds, and then 20% for the next two seconds, and all that kind of stuff. They're all the same. Now, there are a couple, there are two, that are actually more specific to your class. And these are the ones that, in the immediate now, are causing Blizzard just massive headaches. And it was always going to cause them headaches. I don't really know how they're going to fix this, but I'll explain the headaches shortly. So one of them is the Memory of Lucid Dreams. Every DPS has the Memory of Lucid Dreams, but its effect is different depending on which spec you are. So as you can see here... Uh, you clear your mind and attune yourself with the Heart of Azeroth, increasing your astral power generation, which is my DPS resource, by 100%. It's a cooldown. You can see it's got a three-minute cooldown, so I activate this. Um, and then it will... And increases my leech. And I also gain... If I put this in my major socket... So I should explain this again, I suppose. Uh, you can see I have three slots here. The golden one is the major. And as you can see, all of these things come with a major power at the top. Uh, I do want to give a shout out to Bay here from Final Boss, who was like, Blizzard's just been stripping away tooltips. Like, important information, like how taunt works. They've taken that off the tooltip because they want they didn't want to overburden the player. And then they've placed it with these giant tooltips. It's like, ugh. It's more important to know how taunt works, okay? It's more important than coming up with these crazy things. Either way, you can see here that the, each of these essences has two parts to it. They have the major at the top, you can see major power, and you can see the minor power. If it's put into the golden slot, then I gain the major power. But I also gain the minor power. So you can see if I mouse over this, putting that vision of perfection in there, uh, that has given me the major power, and it's also given me the minor. I also have these two other slots. One of them is locked. That needs Heart of Azeroth level 65 to get it. But I have these, and these are both minor slots. So if I put an essence into there, I only gain the minor benefit of it. So the maximum I will be able to get, and you guys will be able to get, is one major power and three minor powers once you fully unlock this system. Okay? So just bear that in mind. Now, how are they going to balance this? And this is the problem. Let me just tell you how crazy this situation has gotten. There, the class discords right now are like a fucking fire in some cases. Some people just don't really care, which is kind of interesting. Like some people, this is how wild it is right now. Some of the class discords are absolutely just like this is just ridiculous because some of these things are so powerful it has ridiculous ramifications for the rest of the game going forward i want to be clear on something this is only 8.2 the likelihood is we have two more major patches coming 8.3 and 8.4 right we're halfway through the expansion that's it we're not near the end now crazy things do happen at the end of the expansion we have seen that 
so many times wall of draenor would probably be the most prime example of that is once the legendary rings got figured out we were seeing mythic raid bosses being killed in like four seconds 13 seconds really crazy things happening but that's kind of okay because it's not something that happens at the first kills or anything like that it comes at the tail end of the expansion when everyone's crazy over geared everybody's got all these mega items and now they can start doing really silly things with them and it doesn't matter because the expansion's about to end you can let the train run freely right at the end we're not there in bfa we're in the middle we're like smack in the middle we know we've got rise of ashara coming and we also know there's probably something else after that as well <laughs> there's probably something else after that as well there is uh so that's something to bear in mind is we're not at the end of the expansion yet these essences some of them are making some really crazy things happen for some people let's talk about are they fun it depends it depends are they fun for you some people are having a ton of fun with them because they are able to do these crazy things right and now some people are going to equate this to something i talked about a lot which is moments of glory when your character is capable of having a moment of glory and that comes from in my mind a moment of glory is you're able to think about how your character works how you can adapt that to a very very niche scenario and here's the important thing a very niche scenario and able to maximize everything that your character could do to pull off something spectacular and that moment of glory is you know you prepared for it you got it ready and you achieved it and you pulled it off and that feels wonderful now moments of glory can't be achieved in all scenarios that's just otherwise that's just how you play your character right that's just how you play your character and also moments of glory require some setup you need that satisfying experience to go god i nailed that i fucking nailed that this isn't quite that but if you like doing crazy damage if that's something that really inspires you doing crazy crazy damage and that's that's enough for you that feels great i just do crazy damage then you're probably going to like this but also bear in mind everybody's doing crazy damage right uh, a lot of people are doing these crazy things so it very quickly kind of loses its uh distinctiveness and its flavor because everybody's able to do this thing although you feel pretty good it kind of in the wash you know over long term it's like well this is just a normal thing it's not the same as like a moment of glory because that's a very niche moment this is something everybody's doing all the time right so it's not quite that although some people are finding them very fun let's talk about first of all the fact that they're role based the fact that they're role based makes them extraordinarily difficult to balance now balance is crucially important i've seen a lot of people say ah fuck balance let's just have fun uh if you've never played a game certainly an mmo where balance wasn't achieved like even close it's a nightmare it's the worst scenario you can ever be in because everybody just plays one one class that's what happens everybody literally everybody just plays like one class and that's all you'll see all the time when classic comes let me tell you something you're gonna see and i'm not shitting on classic here but you're gonna see if they keep things the same you're gonna see a lot of dps warriors you're gonna see a lot of rogues and things like that you look at some raid kills of private servers uh more recent ones especially there's like 13 warriors in a lot of those things <laughs> expect that to happen why they're really overpowered and people like being overpowered uh and they that means the rest of the game is easier for you so why wouldn't you gravitate towards that right it's a very simple process um let's take an obvious one now we know this one's already being nerfed <laughs> they announced last night this one's already going to be adjusted because this thing is a nightmare i had no idea why blizzard decided to do that so i was talking about there is some that are class specific i talked about the uh, lucid dreams uh where is it the lucid dreams yeah the memory of the lucid dreams let me just clear this one up for you first uh so this one gains me astral power and its minor effect is your spells and abilities have a chance to refund the astral power spent on them and immediately heal you so we don't really care about the heal all the versatility the fact of the matter is i just have more resources to keep churning out dps and that's a minor effect so that's a proc i can't control it it just happens it's pretty good like that's all right it's pretty good for mages it does mana because <laughs> what's the mage this one's obviously like in the mind of blizzard it's like it gives you a reese it gives you your dps resource and the fire mages and the frost mages are going huh mana <laughs> like this is the problem with role based stuff is every single class is different and that's a good thing we don't want all the classes to be generic and the same we absolutely don't want that so this doesn't work across the board now that's kind of okay not every essence needs to be of equal value to everybody right that's all right but it does clearly 
it doesn't work. Like, as an essence, it doesn't work. Because that resource doesn't make sense. The next one they're having a problem with, I, I don't, uh, my point is here, I don't think Blizzard wants essences that are completely dead. It's okay if some of them aren't as good as others, but it doesn't make sense to have something that's completely nonsensical in the game. Right? And in that case, it's totally nonsensical. Uh, if we look at the vision of perfection here, this is the one that is definitely going to be nerfed, and this one is... I agree with a lot of the class discords, and I also agree with a lot of the WoW forums, because it's what I read when I first saw this, is this thing is almost impossible to balance. And what this does is it gives you a proc of your major cooldown. And this affects every role. Healers, tanks, everybody gets this thing. So the tanks, I did mention in the first video, get things like warriors get avatar. And uh, there's already an outcry. It's like, this is not possible. This can't go live because it equals about a 30% D DPS increase for prop warriors. <laughs> I know some of you are going. <sighs> uh, whereas other tanks don't have uh, cooldowns that are both defensive, which Avatar is. It's, it has defensive properties to it and offensive. They don't have that. So for them, it randomly procs a defensive cooldown. Which is useless for tanks. Now you might say, how is that useless for tanks? If you're not up on tanking, um, the bi a big factor in being a good tank, right? A big, big portion of that is knowing when to use these cooldowns at the precise moment. Having them randomly proc, you might take less damage overall, but no one really cares about overall damage on tanks. That's not what you're looking for. What you're looking for is the tank to survive the five scythe hits on Argus. And that needs proper cooldown management. And that's what tanks really focus on. It's those big moments of spike damage that tanks manage effectively. And it's really, really unappealing to tanks to have randomly, let's say, if they changed Avatar to Shield Wall, having Shield Wall randomly proc sometimes is useless. Because I would have the cooldown, I can't rely on that. And when I need this cooldown to be ready... I will have it ready, and I will be prepared for it. So the likelihood is, if it is going to proc at a point where I wouldn't be using my cooldowns, it's during a period of time that I wouldn't want it in the first place, right? And so it really scuffs up the idea of the system. Further to that, it's also causing some crazy things. Now, as I said, they are going to have to... They're having to manually adjust this. This is like such a headache. They're going to have to keep going back to this one essence... And keep changing it on a spec-by-spec spec basis to make it work. Because they can do that. Because it changes depending on your spec. But it causes a lot of knock-on errors. So as you can see here for my Moonkin. What this does is it has uh, it's a passive ability. So it's completely out of my control. It will just happen. Uh, your spells and abilities have a chance to activate Incarnation. That's my major DPS cooldown in the current spec I'm in. For 50% of its base duration. Alright, so I get half an Incarnation. At random. Uh, the passive effect, which I also get. So if I want that major, major, as you can see, I have it in my major slot now. So I gain both the benefits of this. My other minor passive from this is it reduces the cooldown of Incarnation Chosen of the Loon by 16.5%. Now, what this means is, and this is where this gets really difficult for Blizzard. This is where it gets really difficult. Is currently... Uh, if I was to even do a derpy DPS rotation, and hopefully I can show this off here. Uh, I've done three 10-minute DPS rotations uh, with my... And I've put a timer over Incarnation here, so you can kind of see uh, what's going on. Is Even if I do a very simple, derpy, not really maximized in any way DPS rotation. Uh, over 10 minutes, what I found is that I was spending 60 to 70%. And this isn't even my live character, by the way. My live character is better than this. Uh, this is just the character I still had on the PTR that was ready and raring to go. Um, I'm already getting 60 to 70% uptime of being in Incarnation over 10 minutes. Now, what that means is that effectively, I am spending less time. Because uh, I'm about to go back into Incarnation here, as you can see here. Uh, I'm going to go back into Incarnation. And it means that actually not being under the effect of my DPS cooldown actually feels wrong because the majority of my time i'm spending inside of my dps cooldown that's not what dps cooldowns are supposed to be about now that really really devalues 
my DPS cooldown. Like, it devalues Incarnation infinitely because I spend more time in Incarnation. Of course, it's not... It is a random proc, so over 10 minutes, you would see this happen. Uh, I would... I would definitely be really concerned at Blizzard that we're halfway through the expansion and we're starting to see effects like this where being outside of Incarnation is actually like... This feels bad now. I want I want to be clear. Like, this is an unlucky proc streak for sure. Uh, but it feels really bad because I know that over 10 minutes when the procs start working out for themselves is I'm going to be spending a lot more time inside of Incarnation. And that's really upsetting to me because i like incarnation i think it's a cool spell uh but now i'm like after playing with it for a while you feel like ah this just isn't that fun anymore like because i'm actually feeling not excited like my dps cooldowns are coming back i'm gonna get to use them in a minute that's pretty awesome now what i'm oh there we go it just procs and it procs on the back of it you can see it won't go past 30 seconds so i'm actually it procs right as the cooldown came back and you can see it just added time to it. I can also add more time to it because of the Arcanic Pulsar. You can see it's back to 30 seconds now. <laughs> so I, if I was like min-maxing this, uh, it would be absolutely ridiculous how long I would spend inside Incarnation. And that's kind of the problem with it. It just procced again, I think, because it just went back up to 20 seconds. This is the issue with this, is it really seriously devalues my character. And once you get used to this... This isn't a good thing. It's it's at first it's kind of exciting that you're going to be inside your DPS cooldown for um, a long time, right? That's kind of cool. But then once you get used to it, you actually change and you're actually like, oh god, it hasn't procced in ages. This is really irritating. Now the knock-on effects of this are pretty obvious, right? Go back into incarnation again. Uh, the knock-on effects are varied across every class. There are some classes like demon hunters and demonology warlocks who are just like getting nearly a hundred percent uptime on their dps cooldown you heard that right <clears throat> demon hunters are finding ways of being in metamorphosis nearly a hundred percent of the time there we go it procs again we're back into incarnation you can see what i mean is it just and i've all i've got almost got my incarnation back again like i've <laughs> it's so dumb <laughs> oh procs again <laughs> So we can wait now because I don't need to even use my incarnation and now it's back off cooldown In fact, my arcanic pulsar is just proc so I can add more time to my incarnation. Do you get what I'm saying here? I haven't even used the cooldown. Uh, it's about to run out. Good shit. Now I can use my actual incarnation And go back into it and be an incarnation again I think it's pretty obvious as you can see here. and it's also very strange I don't know if you've seen this is even with this derpy dps rotation because of how this works And this is the second problem with this item my DPS has gone up. We've been DPSing now for like a few minutes. My DPS has gone up from when I did my opener, right? It wasn't a big crystal super mega opener or anything like that with bloodlust and potions and things. But my DPS has actually risen by over 3k DPS because of random procs. Oh, it procs again and it procs with my Arcanic Pulsar. So I just got another big... I think it didn't even overlap there. That was curious. I think it only went to 15 seconds even with my Arcanic Pulsar proc. So there's some weird interactions with this. That I need to pay attention to because it seems to be... And this is the, another problem as well. Okay, you get the idea. You get the idea. So, <clears throat> one. Are we really going to go into the expansion, even if they've nerfed this slightly? How much does Blizzard want us to be in our DPS cooldowns? Because, like I say, some classes are getting near 100%. Some classes aren't benefiting a great deal from this. It is going to be nerfed because for some classes, it's like Shadow Fiend, I think, for the Shadow Priest. Like, <laughs> what? Um... But it's it really devalues my own personal DPS cooldown. The closer you get to 100% of being within a DPS cooldown, as fun as that might sound to many of you, the less interesting it is, first of all, right? It's way less interesting because you're just in it all the time. It's just something I have. It's like uh, like Be Beastmaster Hunters with Beast Mastery, and they've had some periods where they've just been like constantly being able to use Beastial Wrath. So it, it feels like a part of the rotation. Um, it also has the side effect of... You no longer really have the option of having DPS cooldowns. Because you're always in your DPS cooldowns. So when you think about designing encounters where it's like, okay, this ad needs to die super fast. How does Blizzard balance around the fact that previously you would say that they would plan a boss like this? Well, they're probably not going to use their DPS cooldowns now. Let's look at Fetid Devourer, right? They're probably not going to use them now because they need to kill these eggs. So we can plan that the burst on these eggs is going to involve the DPS cooldowns of the raid. 
But now we're in a situation where I can't push my damage further because I'm always in my DPS cooldowns. How do we balance that? How do we design encounters around the idea that these guys can't generate more damage than what they're already doing because they're already pretty much constantly under the effects of their DPS cooldowns? How do we design fights around the fact that being at the maximum potential damage is kind of the ordinary, right? Is it just going to be based on potions? Is that what we're going to think about? Just potions and bloodlust to be able to manage that? And then some classes aren't going to use this, so they're going to get the benefit of the base effect. But is that going to work out overall? How does this scale? And scaling is something we're going to come back to. The other, the other question is, how does this really play into Azerite traits? Because they're sticking around. Now, some people have really good Azerite traits that are based around their DPS cooldowns. And those traits are designed with players only being inside those DPS cooldowns for X amount of time. And that's how they design the Azerite traits around them. What then happens to Azerite traits if I'm going to be spending like 70% of my time instead of maybe 20% of my time inside a DPS cooldown? How does that work out? What's going to happen there? Are they going to have to constantly shift and nerf this for my spec? And are they going to have to nerf the Azerite traits? And now we're into a two-system balancing act. And as BFA has shown us, balancing Azerite traits has not been a strong point. Let's be clear on this. It's not been a strong point whatsoever. And they've left some stuff running for ages. They've had to come back and readjust some things. It's been wildly out of balance. Now we're into a double system, ignoring for the moment the minor effects that come from the other two slots and the potential for there being more major slots in the future. How does this work? Where do we go from here? If I'm already mid-expansion, and I'm spending this amount of time inside my big DPS cooldowns, how does my class evolve from here? Where do we go? We've already seen the problems with items like this. I forget the item, the uh, Convergence of Fates, actually. We've seen the problems that have occurred with items like this, even when they were low level, right? So Convergence of Fate was still incredibly good until they had to gut the damn thing. Even if you had one that was like 20, 30 item levels lower than what you had access to in the current tier. Because the passive effect, which was similar to this, was so strong. So we had people going back and farming things like Elisand, despite being way past that content. I know our guild did. We used to go and farm Gul'dan mounts and we always killed Elisand to get people Convergence of Fates. They would all bring their alt warriors or whatever in order to get that thing. Um, how do we develop these characters from here? Because... In some ways, you're actually, and this is the interesting thing, you're actually diminishing my gameplay, right? That's the important thing. So you think about a Demon Hunter who's kind of always in meta, you kind of diminished my gameplay because meta was something exciting and fun. Now you're kind of taking that away from me because it's, uh, and I think Demon, I think Demon Ology Wallets are on the same thing, is that because they're getting so many resources, certainly if they're using something like Lucid Dreams on some characters, where they're getting so much resource generation, remember the memory of Lucid Dreams is the one that generates resources, is they're now simplifying their rotation even further than it already is and able to just kind of spam two spells because this is giving them so many resources that they just need to get rid of the resources. So for example, on my Druid, I generate this Astral Power, right? And I, dis I get rid of it by using, one would like to say Starfall, but little little moon kid joke for you there. Uh, so, and then I have things that happen. So I fire a Star Surge and it empowers my two other spells, my Lunar Strike, Lunar Strike and my Solar Wrath. What if I'm generating so much Astral Power that I can't possibly do this part? In fact, all I do is spam Star Surge and then fire off one other and then I spam Star Surge again. And then that puts me into, you know, Incarnation. And I'm just spamming star, star surges and maybe one other spell. And maybe because of like it's faster, you just go sort of like Solar Wrath, Solar Wrath, Star Surge, Solar Wrath, Solar Wrath, Solar Wrath, Star Surge. You can see it takes away part of my gameplay and makes my class actually less fun in the long term, right? That's something we need to consider as well because like this thing is so, these things are so awkward to make work because again, the fun aspect of it is subjective. For sure, like some people will really like it uh, and think it's and think it's fun. I personally think my personal takeaway from this is one: these are way too powerful, uh, certainly for this point in the expansion. They're crazy powerful uh, and they're unnecessary. What they're doing is feels to me very unnecessary because it feels like in some ways they're actually losing losing the flavor of the class. It's supposed to be 
a good thing, at least in my mind, that you manage your resources, right? So I know that when I pop Incarnation, it generates 50 Astral Power. Watch. See the way it jumps up? So something I will do as preparing to go into Incarnation is make sure I can account for the fact that I'm going to get this burst of Astral Power. And if I have a full Astral Power bar, I'm going to waste a lot of Astral Power. I'm going to waste a lot of Empowered Spells. That's a bad thing. So I manage that as a player. If I'm constantly generating all these resources, it no longer matters to me, and I lose another part of my gameplay. It just disappears, and that's a bad thing. That's not very good. So what could Blizzard do about it? Because, as I said, so in some class discords, they're even, in a couple of them, are kind of discouraging talking about these things uh, because they don't believe they're going to go live anywhere close to what they are. Now, that's pretty insane when you think about it. It's like we're actually saying, don't bother talking about this thing. Uh, because there's no way it's going to go live this way. Uh, some of the guys are making good efforts to have fun with it and abuse it, and they may go live. You never know. We know Vision is being uh, rebalanced uh, to make it like less effective. I think there's a post. I'll link it down below because it's going to be class by class and spec by spec changes to try and make it work. But this is the alternative effort. What is Blizzard's alternative with this? And realistically, it's to nerf them so much that they're practically useless and therefore they just turn into a really lackluster trinket which is what some of the other ones actually are they're very lackluster trinkets that are very reminiscent of things like kill jaden's cunning like kill jaden's cunning was cool while leveling but was it the most fun legendary you could get no in fact most people when they saw kill jaden's cunning pop up on their screens they were like eh, you know stick it in the bank i might find a place to use it it certainly wasn't the thing that made you excited right you weren't excited um and therefore, you're like you're not gonna you're not gonna go like the crucible of flame here. You blast your target. Let's let's use it. Let's stick it in. See, you can swap these things in a rested area, and you'll notice that the button just changes. Okay, so they have done that. Is they've just made a major use button. Uh, so what does it do? It blasts the target with a ball of flame, dealing seventeen thousand fire damage to an enemy or healing an ally. Each cast of concentrated flame deals double the damage or healing of the last. The bonus resets after every third cast. So this is the this is what it does. Like <laughs> hardly groundbreaking, right? I think we can all agree it's hardly groundbreaking. You ready again? Boo! Uh, and then it's on cooldown. As you can see down here, it's got 17 seconds. And my next one will do a lot of damage. Well, there you go. And you can see it's burning. All right, fair dues fair dues what i will say about the minor effects of many of them is they're utterly forgettable so in this one i have uh, blood of the enemy uh which again is a again it's a role it's not any way class based the blood of the enemy but it is stupidly powerful um it's basically warbreaker uh, for everybody <laughs> it's warbreaker for everybody um you do have to be within 12 yards but it's the one we talked about earlier on and it is as crazy as it sounds if you're out in the open world and you pull a huge amount of mobs and then fire off the blood of the enemy. It just eradicates the area. Um, and then if he, anything that does survive, you, you're doing so much critical strike damage against them. You have 12 seconds. Uh, so you have 12 seconds. You pair that up with any of your DPS cooldowns. It just, just blows them up. Uh, but as you can see, the passive here is your critical strikes uh, with spells and abilities grants blood of the enemy. Each stack of blood of the enemy gains 29 critical strike. Upon reaching 25 stacks, you gain haste. And Blood of the Enemy has a 25% chance to only consume 15 stacks. So I get this haste proc, as you can see. You see it's building up here. You can see the Blood of the Enemy. So if we dot this up. Now, one thing I will say is people have problems with this as well. Because different classes, and this is the problem they're having with this role-based thing. See, it's at 24 now. Different classes. Pew, there we go. We get a haste buff to go along with it. And I can fire off my super powerful pew pew, pew, pew laser. And now it's reset. Uh, what people have found is... If your class is based around having critical strike already, so remember, every different spec uses different uh, attributes. Some like haste, some like mastery, some like verse. If you're one that uses critical strike rating as standard, you practically get no bonus from this because it can immediately proc the haste. <laughs> and therefore, a big portion of this ability... Uh, is lost the critical strike rating now that does mean that maybe you could tone down your critical strike rating a little bit in order to make it work better but the chances are you're not really going to do that because it's there's a balancing act to be found but if you're a class that naturally works well with having high amounts of critical strike then you obviously gain less and less benefit uh, of resources like this 
And that raises concerns because, as I pointed out some of the more extreme examples, I just want to say, some people are getting like 30% DPS increases from this. From just having these things in. Um, which is nuts. <laughs> it's absolutely nuts. So if I stick the bloody enemy in there, you can see it's taken out of there. And I could put, say, uh, I don't know, uh, Lucid Dreams, uh, more Astral Power. Sure, I can get Lucid Dreams. So now I have the Blood of the Enemy proc, and as I said, with AoE. So I can do some crazy dotting like this, and let's say I've got a lot of enemies around me, and then I pop it, you see it goes, boom, and just smacks everything. And now look at all the critical strike damage I'm getting out of this. Like, it absolutely just dominates the area. I did pop a Starfall. I apologies, my Moonkin friends. <clears throat> it's hard to give accurate feedback on this, because... Uh, but my point was, you can see I'm getting this stacking bonus... It's instantly forgettable, and that's that's my issue with it. The minor powers are instantly forgettable because they end up in a sea of all the other ones, right? I've got overwhelming power. I've got this and that. These, it's like Azerite globules. Like, are you tracking Azerite globules? I'm sure some of you are, but for the most part, you're not. Uh, you're not bothering with that. Like, you have so many random buffs that come from Azerite, and on top of this, these minor effects. Am I really paying attention? Uh, to the resource of astral power no all i check is what what's my astral power at and can i fire a star surge am i preparing to use dps cooldowns or whatever that's all i'm really checking so whether or not it's instantaneously forgettable which means it's uninteresting it's uninteresting i can't keep a track of everything if i put the focusing iris on uh this gives me more haste right so if i get the minor of essence of the focusing iris every two seconds the heart absorbs nearby as right and i gain haste okay so there it is i'm gaining haste cool like it's just a passive haste buff like it's it might affect my stat weights if when i'm simming but that's about it because i'm getting this passive haste bonus but other than that not really like i can't i'm not gonna keep an eye on this thing it's it just once it reaches what does it stack up to uh it stacks up to 10 times so you can see it stacks up to 10 and then it just stays at 10 like that, that's it that's the whole kit and caboodle of it boys that's the whole thing it's instantly forgettable. Um, so what we have here is a combination of a system that, in some cases, you'll find fun. In a lot of cases, they're uninteresting. Blizzard's likely choice here is either to leave these things out as they are and see what happens. And I can tell you what's going to happen. You don't need to see it. It's going to be broken as fuck. And the implications to the game is very destabilizing. And that's another issue I have with this system. We're about to make characters so powerful like that. Because once this comes out, everybody's going to have it, right? So the whole game is about to go and just get incredibly powerful. That means that anything that is in the game right now, including Battle for Dazzar Allah, including the Crucible of Storms, is about to be just squashed. Because characters are going to become so much more powerful than that concept was designed for. So that has ramifications elsewhere as well. From world questing, Mythic Plus, I don't know what's going to happen here with Mythic Plus. Because these things are nuts. We already have so much ludicrous... Uh, AOE ability as we've seen in the MDI from some classes and I know some adjustments are being made there but we're now giving this to everybody how that affects what people are going to do with this stuff I'm, I'm kind of interested to see it um, but I, I, <laughs> it's going to be pretty wacky it's going to be pretty wacky exactly what these guys are going to pull off with this because I've seen reports coming in from private messages and things like that people are just like uh. what I will, will do is I'll try and they haven't figured out the season three affix yet that will be on the ptr at some point they haven't they don't know what it is which is kind of interesting like they knew they were going to have seasonal affixes they uh, it'll be something fish related i guess we might get bubbled or something um but when that's in i'll jump into some mythic plus and we'll mess around with these traits a bit more i know some people have and they're just saying it's crazy it's absolutely crazy so everything in the game is going to be squashed so mythic jaina mount farming should be easier because <laughs> she's going to get absolutely annihilated <laughs> absolutely annihilated with some of these oh blizzard's going to have to nerf these that makes these really dull ones like the ones that are like kill Jaden's cunning the go-to because these are so difficult and awkward to balance and to make work that they're going to have to crush them into the ground as we have seen them do with azurite stuff if the azurite stuff is just if some of them are just too far and away good then the only option is to squash them and make them just not interesting uh, in any way. Right now, they're somewhat interesting. But they have ramifications like no, making your gameplay long-term way worse. One has to really wonder, though, because I talked about scaling earlier. 
these things just scale as your character strength grows because we know that once the new content and stuff comes our character strength is going to grow and grow and grow and grow and grow and these things scale incredibly well incredibly well the more powerful my base toolkit is the more powerful this stuff becomes that's the scaling effect you can think of it like armor penetration like low levels of armor penetration in say uh, wrath of lich king yeah wrath of lich king uh not great but it scaled incredibly well the more of it you got the more powerful it became the better it became so getting two percent more five percent more got better and better and better and you had this graph of it just going better and better and better the more and more of it you got this stuff scales incredibly well and we're mid-expansion how is that going to play out in terms of character progression later because if we're looking at characters that are already spending even if they nerf the vision of perfection uh, are we going to if we're looking at characters who are spending 50 to 60 percent of their time inside their dps cooldowns already what's the next stage of character progression here because it's going to magnify and multiply upon itself as they add more and more to the game very concerned about the system very concerned about the system i feel like it's a very short-term game for, with long-term consequences and i hope i'm wrong but that's how it feels so that's the essence system in a nutshell for me nutshell how long we've we been going like 35 minutes i told you it was going to get nerdy boys there you go let me know what you think i'll see you again bye bye